Kia ora, welcome from New Zealand. It's my pleasure today, today to present this uh, talk to you and I'd like to uh, thank, the, uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to do so. I'd like to start by acknowledging my co-authors, Hester and Diane. We've uh, all been uh, participants in this restoration pro project that I'm going to talk about as our case study. The project is Tiritiri Mātangi Island. It's uh, a restoration that started in 1984, and some of you may have visited the island if you have visited Auckland. The island has a long history of degradation, and as you can see, the uh, the, uh, the, the native forest is long gone and the island was allowed to be burned off uh, for the farming over the last hundred years. However, the restoration project uh, got underway in 1984 and uh, volunteers uh, replanted the island. And with replanting the island, there's also an, another major uh, activity for New, at least for New Zealand restoration projects is the removal of, a, of an invasive species. Uh, the island only had uh, the Pacific rat kiori as the, the invasive mammal, but a number of plants. And at one point we had the Argentine ant, which took 10 years to eradicate. With the revegetation and the invasive species uh, re removed, then other uh, <clears throat> native species could be introduced to the island, some bringing back what uh, would have been so I'm bringing back what would have been on the island uh, at some time ago. Others uh, are species that need uh, refuges free of invasive mammals, but it's still putting back an, an ecology that's uh, uh, a bit different to the original farmland. And this is what the island looks like today. So uh, if I look at uh, some sequence photos, same view, I can't give you the current view. It would be just one tree blotting the blue uh, completely. But uh, so the restoration uh, of, uh, from 1984, a decade of planting and, and 17 animal species, at least two plant species introduced and a community group established since 1988. And uh, this is, an essentially important aspect of the citizen science I'm going to talk about because this is the, um, the source of the volunteers. So not only have the volunteers uh, you know, replanted, but they're, they're involved in the infrastructure of the island, building tracks, buildings, uh, maintaining uh, machinery and involved in the advocacy, uh, education to schools, uh, school visitors and education to public visitors in the, by means of guiding. And if we look at uh, the Society for Ecological Restoration um, success or progress wheels, you can see we've made some huge advances over, over the well, 37 years of the restoration, not uh, no, we're near an end point, but certainly some um, major advances. So let's just think about the science. The Arnhem was a university field research station from the mid 70s and, and uh, essentially the whole restoration project was uh, devised and um, actually initiated through the, the research that was carried out by the field ecologists. And that, of course, is where we can move into the, the science, uh, the biodiversity activities that were undertaken or involved the volunteers as well. So they were launched straight into ecological science and um, sort of instantly became citizen scientists. So the types of citizen science, we we sort of favour the five uh, <clears throat> types uh, identified by Shirk and co-authors in 2012. And the reason for that is that the activities on territory Martangi fit into these five types. More recent publications use uh, fewer types, but I think it's a little less um, clear how, how the, the various activities fit in. So these are the, the types we'll, we'll use and we'll move through the, these as uh, examples. So contributory where the, the uh, volunteers are simply gathering data and 
providing it straight to science. Here's an example. Um, this has actually been published. As you can see, uh, these graphs represent 25 years of, of bird population data gathered by volunteers from Birds New Zealand. Um, as it happens, that key author, uh, Graham, is actually one of the volunteers. So that was early on. We're still doing that, <clears throat> uh, particularly with threatened species like tuatara and little spotted kiwi. Um, is still monitoring these, just gathering data. So contributory is still a, a, a fairly important part of the, the participation in science. But moving into the other types, collaborative, um, this project uh, was established with uh, volunteers talking about the fantails disappearing different times a year, uh, different levels of conspicuous. So, uh, GIS colleague and I set up this um, uh, monitoring program and we divided the island up into cells and numbered them and people took on and adopted a number of cells. And over three years, twice a year, um, we were able to gather this data and sort of prove that there is a significant difference between the, the winter and summer um, distribution of the fantails. This is ongoing. We're moving in to see if we can determine why. I suspect it's breeding, but we're not sure. Co-created, where the volunteers actually initiate the project, but in, um, equally involve the, the scientists. This is um, uh, a project that's in ongoing. You can see the two diagrams down below the, the uh, distribution of um, points that have been surveyed. Uh, and there's probably another two seasons of surveys to, to cover the whole island. The top two diagrams are vegetation types, the, the bottom two are looking at leaf litter and refuges uh, respectively. And put, perhaps see that it's quite valuable for leaf litter to look at where we might introduce or translocate and release um, invertebrates that require a dense litter because it's not consistent across the whole island. So we're building up this picture of uh, abiotic and biotic pictures uh, for the volunteer group. And collegial, this is sort of the, the top end of the citizen science where the citizen scientists themselves take control of the activities. This is a rifleman, New Zealand's smallest bird. And uh, the translocation to the island of this bird was was uh, initiated, uh, run and uh, arranged all the logistics by the citizen scientists, uh, by our, our volunteers, and uh, certainly used the expert advice and involvement, but they were in control. And similarly with another one, translocation of the elegant gecko, this is a locally rare species. So, uh, quite a range of activities. Of course, there are also some things that sort of the volunteers either can't do or don't have the time to do. So they do contract um, scientists to do work for them. So there are the five types and just a, 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 you know, a handful of examples to show that we are covering these five, five types. So let's look at the changes over, over time. First of all, the stakeholder roles. Um, from the, well, before the restoration started. And if we look at the, uh, well, the university um, as the ecological professionals, they set the restoration up and were involved with biodiversity management uh, from the, right from the start. And of course, it had a, a research uh, intention. Uh, they've sort of retired and moved on, but there is some postgraduate research still happening there. The management agency, uh, started in 19, well, set up in 1987. That's the Department of Conservation. And that's after the volunteers actually started getting involved with, with the revegetation. Remember, the university people set up the, the restoration. But over time, um, the agencies have been restructured and funding cuts. And so their focus now is simply on operations. The selected management now is really just. Um, threatened species. However, the volunteers, and particularly because they have a collective legal identity, uh, have really just taken off and covered so many more activities. So the labour is still there, but they're contributing to operations. So they're doing most of the advocacy for the island 
and they are contributing to the biodiversity management and the ecological science. So we think about the change with uh, participation now in terms of these five categories and thinking that as the volunteers um, work on the island, they're, they're building up the ecological uh, literacy, experience, skills, confidence. Um, and they will, it's inevitable that there'll be changes in how they participate. So the contributory started high, but it is still there, but released, uh, redu reduced a little bit. Collaborative, certainly um, volunteers start to see what needs doing, and so they get in and do it. The co-created, perhaps facilitated by uh, the advance in te technology that allows um, uh, data to be collected in the field. So these are all initiated by the volunteers. And finally, the collegial is really uh, sort of this top end, really sophisticated and complex ecology being undertaken, managed by the volunteers. Contractual is still there uh, or is there. And these are the activities that the volunteers perhaps can't do. This contributor is now has been referred to as crowdsourcing, just, just using the, the masses to, to gather data. But what we see through this, this period of the project is a shift to what's referred to as extreme citizen science. And as I said, it's the skills, the confidence, credibility build up, and they undertake in the complex and sophisticated methodologies and, and have a high degree of independence. So over time, the summary, uh, the formal collective allows um, the, the gathering of uh, specialists, uh, not just plant people interested in planting trees, but ac academic specialists come in. The collective can provide funding. And as volunteers get, get gather their knowledge, skills, and confidence, then they shift towards the independent engagement of science. And um, all that can happen because there's a bit of a vacuum created by the um, agencies and the universities sort of stepping back a bit. So it all means that volunteers have gained credibility as citizen scientists. So we know that this won't happen uh, in every pro project to the same extent. It's, um, it all depends on the, the, the nature of the project, uh, the agency in, involved and the composition of your, your group. But I do think that the volunteer as citizen sci scientists will go through some degree of e evolution over time. Thank you very much. <laughs>